What's going on guys? Welcome back to Young and Cool. Today we're looking at insane secrets that SpongeBob SquarePants were hiding from us. At number seven, Mr. Krabs stirs up climate change debate. An educational short called The Endless Summer debuted on Nickelodeon in 2005. The special was about Mr. Krabs trying to make more money, as per usual. But this time, the plot involved using boatmobile exhaust to cause global warming. The reasoning went that this was all in order to keep the new pool he added in the Krusty Krab to get more customers. This, of course, marks the rare occasion when the pool at the bottom of the ocean isn't the thing that makes the least sense in an episode. Of course, his plans get out of hand, and Bikini Bottom is left in ruins. The backlash wasn't exactly instantaneous. It took six years for the short to garner attention on Fox News. A Fox & Friends segment had a panel of analysts criticize the short for, quote, pushing a liberal agenda. At number six, the countless suicide jokes. Post-showrunner change, the show embraced bizarre and out-of-place dark jokes. These moments were not only funny, but just plain distasteful. In one episode, Spongebob goes back to the Middle Ages and meets an unhappy fish who almost slits his own throat. Someday, but not today, he says through gritted teeth. Another episode features Mr. Krabs mentally torturing Plankton in one course meal, until his tiny nemesis is so upset that he lays in the street, waiting for a car to run him over. These kind of jokes seem to be featured most prominently in the episode entitled, Are You Happy Now? In one scene, Squidward hangs the rope from a ceiling, saying, I just can't seem to get happy. Maybe this will help. After an agonizingly long beat, it is revealed that he was hanging up a birdcage. Another scene from the same episode shows Squidward putting his head in an oven, but after another long beat, he is seen pulling out some burnt cookies. At number 5, Spongebob mocks those on welfare. In this episode, Spongebob, you're fired. Political controversy came Spongebob's way once again. This episode is about Spongebob losing his job at the Krusty Krab and being forced to go on unemployment benefits. Initially devastated, Patrick shows him the wonders of being unemployed, like getting free stuff, food stamps, and free time off. Fox News has featured Spongebob on their show before to call it out, but this time they took the show in a positive light. Their view was that the episode was a cautionary tale on the dangers of welfare abuse. This sparked a debate between various media outlets on whether the episode is critical or supportive of welfare users. The fight raged on until Al Sharpton himself went on MSNBC to defend those on welfare. That's right, Al Sharpton went on the news to talk about Spongebob. At number 4, Spongebob is making kids fat. In 2005, a report was released that found compelling evidence linking the rise of American childhood obesity to TV commercials for snack foods. They noted that this was particularly problematic in the cases where those advertisements utilized cartoon mascots or ones that starred popular kids' characters such as SpongeBob. The report urged Congress to get advertisers to stop this manipulative practice and nutrition and children's entertainment advocacy groups held a press conference in 2006 outlining their plans to sue SpongeBob's production company, via as well as Kellogg on those grounds. The aim was to get Spongebob off of cereal, Pop-Tart, and cookie labels once and for all. However, one walk into a supermarket near you and you can see how well this worked out for them. At number 3, creators were caught in a lawsuit over the name. Spongebob was originally meant to have a different name. In fact, the sponge we know and love would have been named Spongeboy if the name hadn't been trademarked already by a cleaning company. The original working title was Spongeboy Ahoy, and so it would have remained if it had already been copyrighted by the bop. The original working title was Spongeboy Ahoy, and so it would have remained if it hadn't already been copyrighted already for a mop. After playing around and reworking the show a considerable amount, they settled on Spongebob Squarepants. This happened after voice actor Tom Kenny riffled for a bit and stumbled upon the combination. Hillenberg made a point of keeping Sponge in the name no matter what, however. Otherwise, he was worried kids might mistake the protagonist for a piece of Swiss cheese or some other strange product. At number 2, Spongebob is a gay icon? In 2002, assertions were made that Spongebob is gay. The accusations were founded on Spongebob's flamboyant nature, sensitive disposition, and closeness with his best friend Patrick, and their hand-holding. Eventually, series creator Steven Hillenberg was forced to make a statement that such claims were ridiculous because the characters are somewhat asexual. An evangelical group brought the controversies to the forefront once again, however, when they boycotted Spongebob for being gay in 2005. In an interview with the Huffington Post in 2015, the voice actor for Spongebob, Tom Kenny, was asked if the character would ever have a significant other. I think our take on Spongebob and Patrick is that they're just pre-sexual characters. Like, they're too young and naive to have any feelings for that type. And even if they do have stirrings, they don't know how to act on them, he said. He's married to his job, like Captain Kirk is married to the Enterprise. Spongebob is married to the Krusty Krab. And 
finally at number one, an interall feud messed with the show's tone and quality after season three. After season three ended, Steven Hillenburg told Nickelodeon he wanted to end the show on a high note by finishing the series of the movie. Nick made the film, but then immediately requested more episodes. Hillenburg left the writing staff as usual, but entrusted his position as head writer to a three-season veteran, Paul Tibbet. A huge staff overhaul coincided with Hillenburg's departure in the wake of a long-standing feud between the storyboarders and animators. Additionally, there were many complaints from the team about how little they were being paid compared to how lucrative the show was for the network. After season three in the movie, there was a near total rehiring of writers, animators, and directors. As a result, the tone suffered irrevocably. As Harvey Dent once said, either you die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. So that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of Young and Cool. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, and comment down below which one shocked you the most. Make sure you guys stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.